Hi everyone, welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time a short one looking at mitosis versus meiosis. I know that it might seem a bit daunting when you're looking at this topic and there are so many phases to learn of the cell cycle, but don't freak out because the two types of cell division are actually not that different. There are a few technical terms to become familiar with though, so hopefully we'll be able to cover these in this video. I'm a bit of a lover of comparison tables when it comes to something versus another. I find them easy to create and they're a great way of having a quick glance when you're revising. So here's a table that I've got for you. Feel free to pause the video at any time to make notes or to copy things out at your own pace. So the first point I want to talk about is diploid versus haploid. By definition, diploid is a cell which contains two complete sets of chromosomes, one from mum and one from dad. Like me and you contain 23 from our mum and 23 from our dad. Haploid is a cell which contains a single set of chromosomes, so mitosis produces diploid cells, or 2N cells, and meiosis produces haploid cells, or N cells. Remember that mitosis is there for growth and replacement of tissue, so it does make sense that those cells will be diploid. The second and the third point here are looking at daughter cells. Mitosis gives two daughter cells which are genetically identical to the parent cell. Meiosis, on the other hand, gives four daughter cells, all of which are different from another. Let's look at this image. This is the mitotic cycle and highlighted in the red circle are the parent cells and the daughter cells. Note how we start off with one parent cell and end up with two daughter cells. Note also how they look exactly the same in the diagram. In meiosis, we have the parent cell, which is in that red oval at the top. After meiotic divisions, we end up with four daughter cells, all of which are different from each other. We know that they're different because if you look at the colour of the lines inside of the circles, which represent the cells, they're all different. You've got one blue, you've got a blue and a pink, you've got a pink and a blue, and then you've got a pink one. So all of those are completely different from each other. Note also that this is a diagram that shows how we also end up with haploid cells. If you look at the parent cell, you've got the X-shaped chromosome, which shows the diploid parent cell that we begin with, and then at the end we end up with haploid daughter cells. The next point to look at is the number of divisions. In mitosis, we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. In meiosis, we have all of those phases, but twice. So effectively ends up being first division of prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and cytokinesis one. And then we end up with the division two, or the second division of meiosis, which ends up being prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, and cytokinesis as the last part. The next point on the table is looking at homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are two pieces of DNA within the diploid organism which carry the same genes, one from each parental source. In mitosis, the homologous chromosomes do not pair up. In meiosis, though, they do. This picture here illustrates this a little bit better. So the diagram on the left shows you metaphase and mitosis. You can see the chromosomes in their X shapes on the equator of the cell. There is just one chromosome at each of those locations on the equator. If we look at metaphase in meiosis at the bottom right hand diagram, we can see that there are a pair of chromosomes in the equator. This is metaphase one and I can tell because the chromosomes are still held together by their centromere and they're in their X shape. In metaphase two, the chromosomes are not in pairs. The key point here, though, is just to note the difference. The fact that in metaphase and meiosis, you get the two pairs of chromosomes, whereas metaphase and mitosis, you just get the one single chromosome on the equator. Finally, we have the last comparison point of independent segregation and crossing over. Mitosis doesn't have either of those two stages, whereas meiosis does. Independent segregation, sometimes known as independent assortment, is when the homologous chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell independently of each other. This results in the random assortment of gametes, which is part of what gives us genetic variability. The crossing over part is best illustrated in this image here. You have homologous chromosomes here in blue and pink, but you can see that a part of each of them are another colour. So the blue one has a bit of the pink and the pink one has a bit of the blue. Crossing over occurs in prophase one of meiosis and it occurs once the chromosomes have paired up. 
Whilst paired, they come very close to each other and may become tangled and segments of genes or genetic information may be exchanged. This ultimately leads to a recombination of alleles and produces genetic variation also. Okay guys, so I hope that comparison helped you understand the similarities and the differences between mitosis and meiosis. Eventually I will of course go through all of the phases. This was, video was requested by one of my students so I thought it would help everyone do a bit of revision on this topic. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know if you've got any questions by commenting below. Bye for now.